I was there. I had to unlearn everything to relearn the truth and find and be able to see the facts and act upon them. It's not something that you're necessarily born with. I had to suffer a heck of a lot to win this. Now, I could have isolated my training and knowledge in homeopathic medicine, herbal medicine, nutrients and such to only that. But my problem was I saw these principles at play in healing and I said, wow, I wonder if it works in politics. I wonder if it works in economics. How many of you think you can be healthy if you eat Twinkies morning, noon, and night? Great nutrition in Twinkies, right? Of course, you'll be sick, diseased, decay, degenerate. So how is it that we expect to be able to use Federal Reserve notes every day and be economically viable? It's like eating Twinkies. There's no nutrition in it. There's nothing in it. It's empty calories. And here we are again, another mandate, another federal mandate, a monopoly that is, violates the very Constitution. I thought we were supposed to, you know, if you run for office, you win. You take an oath to uphold. It's the very first thing they forget, trash, walk upon. Much like a medical doctor, if they used to take the Hippocratic Oath, the very first thing they forget when they prescribe a toxic drug approved by the federal government. Healing is your birthright, and I think healing this nation is a birthright that we all share as well, should we desire to do it. It's not guaranteed that the United States of America will go on forever. It was never guaranteed. It was up to the posterity, as they called us, when it was uh, formulated, formed, to be vigilant enough to not allow to, to, not allow to happen what has happened where we have a government that has run roughshod over the rights of the states and the people. Yet it was the states and the people that created that federal government. Now there's something on planet Earth called the law of cause and effect in physics. And Jesus says, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Is there an exception for government? Because the illusion is we can do whatever we want as long as we're in a government situation or even an artificial creation of the state. That's a corporation. We can do whatever the heck we want. There is no, somebody say, karmic retribution. Because we are shielded from liability. That is the biggest fallacy that can only be held by someone with such a low level of maturity. We have to call them immature. And that would be kind. But those people in Washington, D.C., by and large, maybe with rare exceptions, someone like Congressman Ron Paul has been doing it for years, don't seem to think that the laws of nature apply to them. Do we have to suffer equally, medically? Do we have to beg the government once we may have cancer because of our own lack of understanding that we have a constitution, we have to beat it, we have to pull out the pollutants that damage it? When we end up one day, maybe with cancer, like my grandparents, like my aunts and uncles in their 50s and 60s, I would not be alive today in my 40s, thriving, much less alive, had I not made the changes that I made to nullify the federal government. I did what they said is not allowed. It's against the law. It's illegal. I can bring healing to you, not because I'm any more special or knowledgeable per se. I guess you could call it that, but I think I listen. And I think that's why we're in a heap of pain right now, because we haven't been listening. I mean, we can, what they say, curse the darkness or turn on the light, right? The suffering that I went through, I am, I've embraced. I mean, my God, if I didn't suffer the way I did with all the ailments I didn't even mention, I could not learn what I have learned today. And our founding fathers, the framers of the Constitution, suffered immensely, as you know from history for what they did, the Declaration of Independence and what followed, so that we would have the blessings of liberty. And we don't have to ask permission. We never had to ask permission. If there wasn't a Declaration of Independence, would that suddenly mean you don't have any rights? If they didn't have a Bill of Rights, would that mean those rights didn't exist? Did the Bill of Rights even grant you any rights? Absolutely not. All of those things were designed to limit the government so that it would not infringe upon those rights, so they didn't write them all in there, as you know. Our birthright is not only in healing, which is of course a big passion of mine, but it is in freedom. But we can't force the world to live free any more than the federal government can force us to be free, because 
Well, let's face it, it's the opposite that they're trying to do by a gunpoint. By not allowing us to do that, which again is our birthright here. Now, I, I, I don't mean to sound pessimistic. I hope I don't. I mean, I'm actually quite optimistic about the future because I've seen people that have come to me with ailments that for sure, if they went to modern medicine, they would be dead. And they're alive today. And they're thriving today. Not just a little bit. You know, you want to talk diabetes, gone. Infectious disease, gone. Cancer, done. Regularly. It's not supposed to be possible. But it's transformed them in such a way that they now recognize and look at life differently. They value it differently. They live, they eat, they sleep, they breathe differently. And I think what's happening now is forcing us to do the same. And it's really strange to say that because believe me, on my radio show, I have cursed the darkness from time to time. Been a little upset by what has happened here. Obama was only made possible by Bush before him. So it isn't just that it's an R or a D or an L or a C. We recognize that liberty is something that is, again, embedded in our DNA. But it was lost. It was certainly lost to me. I didn't know any better. And of course, when illness set in, it was very difficult to live freedom in the way we were designed by God to live. Because I became dependent upon experts endorsed and licensed by the very government that sought to keep me enslaved and dependent upon them. Because there are people on planet Earth that love to have power. I mean, it's hard to see the cruelty when you look at the vaccination paradigm and what it's done. How many millions of children have been harmed? How many thousands and hundreds of thousands of harms and many thousands have died? In fact, there's been over $1.6 billion paid out since the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Act of 1986 was passed. $1.6 billion has been paid out to families of children who were either injured or killed by vaccination. This is endorsed by your government. And we may here believe, hopefully agree on a culture of life, but yet our government endorses a culture of death in modern medicine that is responsible, according to the meta-analysis done by my dear friend Dr. Carolyn Dean, in 784,000 deaths every year caused by government-sanctioned medicine. Now, even if we went to the Journal of the American Medical Association in the year 2000 and looked at the Barbara Scarfield report, we would find that at bare minimum 106,000 American Americans are dying every year due to government-sanctioned medicine. That's 33-plus 9-11s every year. What, what did we do when 3,000 or so Americans died on 9-11? We supposedly went to war on terror. How did that work out? going to war and attack it. And Nixon, back in the night, early 70s, almost 40 years ago now, said, we got to declare war on cancer. 40 years later, there's more cancer than there's ever been. And there's more cancer in children than there has ever been. You find that you declare war on something, you tend to get more of it. Especially the way our government runs a war nowadays. When you had a declaration of war, it used to be an all-out thing. You did it, you done, you go. It's over. Now we have a perpetual state of warfare, which is tantamount to your immune system being on 100% of the time, as if it's always under attack. And when you have your immune system on all of the time, it will eventually exhaust its resources, its supplies, its nutrients that may or may not be in the food you're eating. And at that point, all bets are off. If you started with XYZ disease, now you're looking at autoimmune until you exhaust from lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, down to cancer. Because you cannot live in a perpetual state of war and survive healthily. And our economy has been operating in that so-called warfare state for a long time. This is why we are losing, rapidly losing energy. The restoration of that energy is easy. It's simple. But we have to be willing to face up to the fact that we kind of gave our power away. Not that we technically can, but we kind of said, hey, just don't bother me. And that's kind of a, hey, I respect that. I don't, I don't want to be bothered. 
But at this point, the lack of respect for you not wanting to be bothered, it's done, it's over with. As I said before, if you want to heal somebody from cancer without a, a government sanctioned method, they're coming after you. They won't leave you alone. So at what point do you say, I have to stand up and declare what is right and true? And declare once again your independence. Just like those did so long ago in our country, prior to the Constitution even. A declaration of independence. I speak in terms of health freedom, but I think it's a fundamental freedom that if we don't get that under wraps here and incorporated into our own life, we can talk a good game about the Constitution and the Tenth Amendment and liberty, but we're going to be so wrapped, wrapped with diseases that we will not have the energy to defend liberty and make sure it is once again possible for our children and grandchildren to live in a country that we believe I don't mean to be egocentric, but it's the greatest country on the planet, at least at one time, with a high ideal that no, no other country had ever done before. A grand experiment, quite honestly. But just because we can say we're great, we believe it, we love it, doesn't mean we can act in arrogance. I mean, you want your neighbor coming to you and beat you over the head, telling them to live how they want you to live? It's like this with the germ theory. You ever heard of the germ theory in Louis Pasteur? Funny thing. The germ, he says, hey, you know, if I sneeze on you and I have the flu, you get the flu. Right? The, the mere presence of or contact with a germ, that's it, John, you're over. You're going to get the flu because you contacted into that, uh, that virus. But it's not true. On his deathbed, Pasteur said, hey, I was wrong. Contemporaries of his were right, Bechamp, Bernard, the law, the law of the terrain. The germ is nothing, the terrain is everything. But we have been operating under a false assumption in biology and immunology that has impacted the way we look at things politically and economically. And warfare relates back to this germ theory, this biology that is completely false. Because if we believe that the germ theory is real, then we are worried that our neighbor's lawn contains pathogens and I walk by it, they could jump up and get me. So I'm perfectly justified in taking preemptive action and napalming their garden. I don't want to walk by there and get sick. I'm burning that up. But if you have that belief, then it's okay to go out around the world and carpet bomb the planet as the doctors have carpet bombed the planet with antibiotics. Because you never know when Candida is just going to jump out from your neighbor and get you. But the law of the terrain says it much more beautifully and simply and truthfully that it is the terrain and the you or the environment that determines health or disease and not the pathogen. Which means that a healthy terrain begets healthy life. A people that are healthy begets liberty. A people that are unhealthy, sick, breeds dependence. Breeds Obamacare. And Obamacare, really, all it did was mandate that which came before it, the medical monopoly of which, I'm sorry, the Republicans were just as guilty as the Democrats. Rah, rah, no corporatism. So it isn't one man, certainly we can pinpoint a lot of bad things any one man has done, any one, any one of us here have ever done in our life. But do we beat them up because of it, or do we begin to live differently and become that living example for others? I am alive today because of people that have had worse diseases than me and have recovered. Despite the fact that the government, all the doctors said, it is not possible to recover, you will not live. And I know differently. And once you know that truth, you can walk that truth, you live that truth, you will impact and impart that truth on others. Not necessarily because the words you speak because the way you live. And nullification is that way of life that doesn't ask for permission where none is required. And it's not required. So stop asking. Well, I'm very grateful for the time that I've had here. And I hope to be able to meet with you afterwards at any time during the day. I'll be in the back. Come back, get a shot of silver. And we'll do things the federal government doesn't want you to do. <laughs> My show, I'm kicking off Monday through Friday with Mike Adams of NaturalNews.com. We're going to be streaming it live starting Tuesday, February 1st. You can still hear my show on Sundays. Just Google my name, you'll find it, or come back and see me. 
Again, I'm very grateful to Bryce Shanka, Michael Bolden, the 10th Amendment Center. Please give them your support, and I appreciate you all being here. It's going to be a great, great afternoon. Thank you.